So Nassim, I've heard that there is an article by Ioannidis that he claims that, you know, if we don't know absolutely positively what's going to happen, then maybe we should just shouldn't do anything. What do you have to say about that? So let me start with Ioannidis and why he has an appeal and uh, he gained some respect in the past because he was one of the VS busters in medicine by saying, you know, this doesn't replicate or, or uh, and he discovered, he's not a mathematician. So he doesn't know the flaws of p-values that are inherent. He just said, look, uh, you're saying uh, this and, and, and that's not what we have. However, uh, you know, you, the, the classical problem of the doctor is the one that I'm going to ask you to describe. What problem do you have with doctors when, when it comes to pandemics? Once, years ago, when we were fighting uh, in, in the, Ebola, the Ebola days, you said a doctor is trained to cure a person in front of her or him. Right, so doctors are exactly. basically trained for someone that shows up in the office and to treat them. And public health experts generally, mostly, not always, but mostly yeah. think about it as being many, many individual patients that show up into the exactly. office instead exactly. of communities and so on. Exactly, so, so you want this has two problems. The first one, he doesn't understand scaling is that a cure for an individual is not the same as a cure for a community and a cure for a community is not the same as for the world at large, that some risks permeate and go up much faster than others. That's the first thing he doesn't understand. And the second one he doesn't quite understand is that um, in a risk domain, you don't use naive scientific evidence. You need much stiffer requirements on one side, but not the other. So if you get on a plane and you have someone gives an information, oh, we have a lot of uncertainty about the skills of the pilot. What do you do with the Yanir? I would get off of the plane. You get right? off the plane. That's exactly the point. And it's not costly to get off the plane if you do it early. That's the point. So my idea of the inserto and in decision uh, theory is that there's an asymmetry. If uncertainty on one side, not the same as uncertainty on the other side. And that's what this whole anti-fragile book is about, that convexity on one side, the asymmetry is something they don't get. They tell you, well, I need evidence. If, if you had you have an asymmetry and, and something that is even known by psychologists who usually don't understand risk, uh, what, what's better to mistake a bear for a stone or to mistake a stone for a bear? Yeah, I, I get your point. Yeah, you, you wouldn't point. want to be eaten by a bear. Exactly. So you, you'd rather make a mistake on one side than the other. So when you have uncertainty and absence of evidence, it should lead you to more precaution than less precaution. Yeah. So the second point I'm going to say now, background, Yanir, uh, myself, and John Norman, um, and a fellow who will not be named now because he has uh, some functions uh, we can't discuss. Anyway, we uh, got alarmed <laughs> greatly on Jan 24. And by Jan 26, we had that paper. Um, saying, hey, you have a problem, and if you cut your losses now, it will cost you pennies. And we explicitly said, if you wait, it's going to cost you a lot more. And it's exactly like insurance is a lot more expensive during the fire than before the fire. Okay? Yeah. So we, we, the background is we made that, we made that uh, statement, and it would have had someone heeded us. Well, they heeded us, but not quite. Uh, we would have been, uh, 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 you know, we wouldn't have spent the three trillions. But every argument we heard, and we actually incorporated it in a paper initially, or we have heard over the past few years, is that, you know, insurance is costly. Well, insurance is costly, okay? Not really, okay? There's some things that are not costly. Uh, yes. I have a couple of things to add. Number one, for me, it seems at this point, anybody who's saying that there's uncertainty, it's like, you know, they're looking at a truck running them down and they choose to look away and say, I don't see anything. And it's like, they're asking questions like, you know, hey, are there headlights on or not? You know, I can't see. I can't yeah, see if so their headlights are on or not. I have two statements to make about our precaution principle. We were very, very explicit that our systemic precautionary principle, not idiosyncratic, idiosyncratic precautionary principle, you put the seat belt on. Okay, you don't ask for evidence of car crash, you just put it on and worry, that's individual. At the systemic level, Okay, it is very clear that you should only worry about risks that are explosive, fat tail, okay, yeah. and identified early. And you effectively, we were waiting for this event. 
I, I agree. Look, I, we've been talking about this for many years. There's a structural difference between the uncertainty when you don't know what the things are happening and the certainty when you actually see that it's coming at you because you know how it's behavior and what happened in China, what happened in Syria, what happened in Italy, and already what's happening here with hospitals already becoming overrun. This is not a pretend thing. This is not something that might happen. This is something that is happening. And so okay. to claim now that we are uncertain about it, even the statement of uncertainty doesn't itself make any sense. Okay, so January 26, we had our warning and, and we had, you know, among the things we proposed were very simple solutions of constraining mobility, lowering connectivity a little bit, and the thing would probably have blown over, okay? Nobody heeded us because it's too expensive for the airlines. And, and of course, there's something about, actually, I don't like this insurance analogy, but insurance costs money. My idea, precaution generates money. And, and of course, uh, needless, I'm not gonna discuss my personal financial situation today, but, uh, but I will tell you one hint, it doesn't cost money to hedge, <laughs> okay? So the, uh, I have another point in general that we have uh, uh, faced because we've been working on the precaution principles for about five years on the details. And, and our thrust was not on telling people when to worry, but on explaining to them not to use the precautionary principle for trivial matters. Okay, by saying, hey, what if Martians are gonna be here? Let's, you know, uh, let's be hedging against that. But been confining with in precise term what we should worry against. Yeah. Second thing I wanna say is a homage to Pete, uh, Peter Ho from Singapore. Yes. And I introduced you to him and you went to visit him in Singapore. Yeah. These people, Okay, you didn't have to convince them no. because they invited me after I wrote the Black Swan, they invented, invited me, it took five years to get there, you know, as far as Singapore. So I ended up visiting them in Singapore and they were prepared for something like that. And guess what? I mean, the, when you're prepared, it costs penny. People who think strategically and understand the essence of what it means to face a catastrophe. And these are people who don't, just believe that what yesterday is going to be the same as tomorrow, but understand that bad things can happen, that reality matters, that talking about it doesn't change what's going to happen, that doing something can change. That's the people that we need to be executing in terms of the current situation and, 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 and acting uh, on our behalf in decision making. Okay, so the next topic, let's not cover it now. I have to go for the hike. That's the only thing we can do these days. Uh, but the next topic, we're going to talk about convexity the, of uh, uh, the, the, the economic uh, cost. Right. The fact that the costs are incredibly high, much higher than people look, look think. At it because, they don't exactly, because it's very convex. Say you run out, out of hospital beds, you run out of ventilators. And, and these idiots, since Jan 26, uh, did not think of a precaution. Very simple precaution, like uh, 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 have a good testing, uh, you know, increase your... Uh, your Low cost, prevent. this is, I mean, how often did we hear uh, an ounce of prevention is a pound of cure? But that's a normal circumstances. When you have an exponential process, it's much bigger. Exactly. So we talk about the convexity. And now, of course, uh, there's something about these half-learned people, Steven Pinker, Johan Needis, these people. They may be useful at something, but really you should stop them because there's problem in the minds of people who know enough statistics to be able to talk about it with a uh, humanity student, but not enough to understand what these numbers mean and, and, and how it can be used in real life. Whereas your grandmother doesn't know the statistical framework, would immediately understand to not drink you know, water if you suspect it may be poison. You don't need the evidence of poison to not drink the water. All right, yep. thanks. Thanks. Thank Talk you. Talk to you later.